So Okay. Uh, a moment. Be sharing my screen a bit. Um, sorry about this. Yeah. So, okay. Uh, let me just um, share my screen and then. Uh, I'm sorry for this delay, but okay. So today's tutorial is about um, data collection and web scrapping in particular. Um, so uh, I guess uh, like you already have like um, in the morning on going through the, the document, you understand kind of the like why we are being, sorry. Yes, Abraham. Go ahead. Let's see. Um, is it that you don't hear me? It was an inconvenience. I'm sorry. Sorry. Uh, so yeah, I'm. I'm. I'm just. I'm. Uh, I want to check again. Can you hear me well? Okay, thank you. So yeah, I'm sorry. Yes. Have, yeah, thank you. Uh, yeah, so I'm having problems with my network and my mic microphone, so I'm, I apologize. Um, uh, I'm very sorry, but let's uh, hope this is going to work. Okay, so just to this uh, to reiterate something that you might understand already, or you should you should understand by by now. Why is why are we going to be that? doing like data collection why are we going to be collecting um uh text and audio in these uh, different languages so um just like uh, the thing is that uh, to to um to train uh, an llm model or just uh, any uh, deep learning or machine learning model for nlp uh like for natural language for, uh, for like processes pro processing like any kind um it requires a lot of data okay so llms in particular uh, large language models require a lot of data and uh while the biggest models that you know of like these famous ones like uh, open ai and uh, like uh, all, all the others these are largely um uh, models that are um trained on English language uh, uh, data set so um, which is widely available of course like um, English is everywhere the internet is like uh, I don't know how much of it, of it is English but like it's a higher higher uh, it's a high percentage but also the prepared data if you want right now to train your own model you can look up uh, data sets uh, ready for to be used to train uh, data the, like uh, uh, machine learning models for any kind of purpose um uh like translation well, uh, translation is a bad it's a bad example but because you need other languages as well but like um audio transcription and uh, like uh, it's another an example of something that you can train your model for and if you search for a data set to 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 train your model probably you're going to find a data set that multiple data sets are already available ready clean pre-processed you can just use right away or pre-processed for your own purpose uh but of course i say i'm going to reiterate again large language models are better by training them on very large data so even like uh, open ai this or other bigger big models these are trained also on data not just prepared that i said but they also scrape um the internet for for as much data they can get they scrape the, the internet they use uh, the prepared data set they use like uh, data from like um, 
uh, data that is, of course, scrape uh, the internet for um, data that is publicly available, but it can also get data that is not publicly available. And the more data they have, the stronger the, their models are, of course. Um, so, but uh, when we are working with uh, these languages, sorry if I'm, 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 I'm saying a lot about this, but just to give you an understanding of what you aim to do, you can see that like uh, the document, the, okay, so it's called a Scalable Warehouse for LLM fine tuning. So you're not going to be training or the, the goal is not to train an LLM from scratch with this, uh, with the data set you're going to get because you're not going to get this huge data set as much as you can, as, as much as you try. You're not going to find that huge data set in language other than English. But uh, you're going to be fine tuning LLMs. Fine tuning is that yeah, LLM that is already trained on a large English lang language data set, you can fine tune it further by training on data set that is from a different language. Um, it, it still has to be big data set, the bigger the best, but it doesn't have to be as big as the original data set. So that's just to give you an understanding about this. The languages we, we are um, aiming for and Parik and um, what is the other two? Uh, these are languages that are, um, wait, I missed it. Um, anyway, these are languages that are like low resource languages that are referred to as, as low resource languages because they, they are, they don't have as much, um, like as much of them available basically. Uh, and, um, okay, just, um, anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, so the thing is that we want to collect as much data in these languages as we can. So um, just moving forward. So they don't have much in this uh, in these slides, but I just already talked about like uh, we're going to be talking about the data resources just generically very and then like web scraping and then i'm going to try to do a demo of using a couple of tools in for web scrapping and discuss uh the um there thereof uh okay and um okay so yeah so the goal of getting that the, the, the data is to provide raw material for training our, our nlp um our llm models uh so the possible resources for the data set you can already you can find prepared data set and uh, you have to search for those already because like um look look up for, like for example one one website you can find uh prepared data set for for like uh, fine-tuning uh, or training different uh, machine learning models is hugging face um like uh, hugging face uh, uh it's like you can find models, fine tune models, but you can also find um, data sets. So this is a higher phase data set. Uh, but you can also, like, yeah, this, it has these different, um, you can fi find models. You can um, publish your own LLM or like a model, just machine learning model here on Hagen Face. But you can also publish like a paper pair uh, data set and you can look up like um, uh, whatever, like, uh, um, a data set in uh, by language. Um, like, let's say, like, uh, I want to look at something that happened. Okay, you can see. Um, like, here, like, multiple languages. So, um, let's see, like, uh, there is Japanese. Oh, again, anyway, so you can find, I, I cannot find, oh, Swahili. Swahili is here. So, here you can find already like um, data sets are like um, in Swahili and you can check this off, check them and see if they are suitable and you can include them in in, in like in, the, in your big data set you're going to, to have. So these are already prepared uh, for particular purposes. Um, you can find uh, data sets that are publicly available, are easy like to just download, for example, Wikipedia, for example, provides this. 
uh, Wikipedia dumb, so basically you can find uh, Wikipedia in multiple, well, Wikipedia is multiple languages, I don't know if these languages, I think they were, are going to be there, uh, so you might use that, and you can also like um, web scrap, basically, like any kind of uh, website you think is, is, is suitable, you can use, so this can be like news websites, blogs, anything. Um, and think of as much more as you can think of. It's going to be like quality data, quality text, quality uh, audio, uh, transcribed audio, um, all that we can think, uh, like the goal, as, as Yaval mentioned in earlier, that is we want to see by the end of the week is like, we want to have an idea of like how much data or how much data is available in these languages out there okay and of course you're going to build uh, a system that will collect this data for you um, clean it and pre-process it store it and um and like have it like ready to be used for 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 fine-tuning and um training uh, machine learning models uh okay so just to talk about what's scrapping so I mean, it's obvious, I, I suppose. Scrapping is just you're going to collect the data from website and using like a, a script or a bot, basically. So you see, you're not going to be copy pasting it, of course, uh, or downloading it. Um, so you have to have a tool, software, a script to parse the HTML content and return the desired information. Okay, so you can get the whole of course like when we talk about web scraping we have to have some understanding of how what is the content of of um of a web um web page so it's html basically but um so this is just a website like it's actually like a part of a tutorial on uh using um uh web scrapping i think it's beautiful beautiful soup uh like from real python but this is just our page to like to look at the content like we can view the like this is kind of, you can do this like uh, all browsers have these tools basically to look at the content of the page so here on chrome i have like uh, control u or your whoops page source i can see the content here in html html sorry and uh, this is the, the the content of this web page okay uh itself for example you can see um okay so you can understand like it's a body like it's uh, there are these tags um uh so you have like for example html here and okay so it will be the closing one by in the end the end of the page like let me look at one that is like I don't know, we can okay for example here looking at the title they are like the the title fake python is enclosed between these two tags uh title and uh backslash title so this is like uh, this is one element. You can see some elements have, uh, for example, this element link has what is called attributes. So one of the attribute is um, the link itself, like what is the actual link? It's, it's linking to this element. And, uh, um, and of course, there are like class. It's just, um, um, these are like just have a basic understanding of 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 this stuff because what you can do basically when we are you are web scrapping you can get this it's the whole document the whole html file but you can also get like a specific uh part of the page if you like um aim for like the either the element itself or its attribute if you can identify it by using these different tools. Uh, so maybe I'm, I just skipped a step of talking about the tools themselves. 
So, uh, of course, you can have multi, there are many libraries where you can, you can use for scrapping. These are just example. Uh, Scrappy, Beautiful Soup, Selenium, Playwright, these are all, and there are others. Um, like, as I said, you have to need, you need to have some basic understanding of HTML tags and attributes uh, when you are working with this, um, with these uh, libraries depending on your goal but like if we were you going to try to get like uh, the and anyway whatever like content you're going to get you're going to clean and remove these html tags and stuff uh, from it but um like uh, in, in some cases maybe you're for example if you're going to scrape for audio in particular um you don't want to get the whole everything on the page you just want to get the like the audio itself or something so depending um you, you, this this libraries allow that to allow you to choose basically and we can see this in in um in practice basically uh any questions so far i hope that i i, I think i didn't say anything that is too complicated but any questions Okay, so, uh, yes, uh, Sheila. Um, hi, um, um, can you hear me? Yes. All right, so you said that um, in our, in this challenge, what we're supposed to do is um, we need, okay, do we need two data sets? The first large data set for English so that we can use it to and then we need the other data set for like one of the languages that we're going to select. Is that what you said? No, uh, um, you are not going to collect any English. You don't need to collect English at all. Um, and what I'm saying that um, I'm telling you what is the goal or the, let's say it's not the goal of this challenge, but the overall goal of this, um, what is it called? The company It had a name. Um, sorry. So just... <laughs> to explain here from the challenge document itself. So this Roots Tech Solutions, this is just a company, it's a company's name. They are trying to, what they want to do is they, they want to find to, one of the things that they want to do is fine tune an LLM or multiple LLMs to, uh, to understand. So uh, one of, okay, example of an LLM, uh, an LLM is OpenAI, right? OpenAI, multiple models, GB, um, sorry, uh, ChatGBT or GBT, different um, various models, right? ChatGBT, when you talk with it in English, it understands you well, right? It understands you and answers you perfectly. But if you use Amharic or use like uh, um, Swahili or Arabic or, or any other language that is specifically um, uh, like languages that are not widely used, it doesn't necessarily understand you, or if it understands you and still it's, its understanding is limited and the ans its answers that it, it gives you are not really makes, doesn't, do, 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 do not make sense. You can actually try right now. Try to use Swahili or like whatever language you, you, you know uh, on ChatGPT and see like how, how well it works. Um, so, what I was trying to say is that to it, it is possible to like um, maybe not chat GBT or GBT models itself, but like because these are not really publicly available. But uh, models, other models like Llama, for example, this is a large language model that is trained on uh, largely on, on English and some other few other languages like French and Spanish and stuff. But like this uh, contribution from these other languages is small. So this, uh, for example, this Llama model understand English and Spanish and French to some extent, but doesn't understand Swahili. To make it, this is uh, this model itself, to make it understand Swahili, I don't need to retrain the whole model. I just need to fine tune it with data from Swahili, in Swahili. So I don't need the data in English. You don't need i was just telling you that this uh, this uh, model it has already been trained on a very big data in english very big data set in english and because of that to make it understand another language you need a big data set not as big as the english one 
that the original one, but you still need a big data set that is in these um, other languages to, to, to fine tune it. Uh, to fine tune it so that it understands this language. Does, does this make sense to you, Sheila? Yes, it does. Thank you. Okay, great. So I was just trying to explain to you the the like the overarching um, um, goal. But uh, the goal of this challenge is to collect just data in these uh, three languages or one of these three languages, depending on what you choose. Um, okay. Uh, so I'm, I'm going to be seeing how, like, um, sorry. So how, um, yes, how beautiful soup. For example, it starts with beautiful soup. Uh, or let me just um, uh, clear all outputs. So what I'm doing here. This is just like a notebook that. Um, so, if I, if I all I want to get is the HTML content from a web page, I could just use the request um, mo module. Okay, I have here my URL. So you have, of course, what you have to do at, at the first step is you have to choose your data. Your data. Uh, sources so your websites okay um so this is a website i'm looking at so I, this is the one i want to get the data from uh so i enter the url here and using this i can get the text all the the like html the one that i can look at here so i told you like looking at the sorry looking at the web page uh view page source i can't find this and this is what i get here by running this code uh what beautiful soup allows me to do is to actually uh, parse this content meaning that i can get particular parts of it not all of it if i want and um okay so this is i'm using beautiful soup here the same web page um uh so i'm just like i, I i'm still getting like uh, the url uh, sorry the content we're using the request of module but i'm going to parse it with beautiful soup here i can find uh i can extract information from particular parts from the from the web page let's say um i want to look at let's see so just so uh, another thing we can do is we can inspect this element so again this is a chrome the browser um uh, tool that allow me to look at like a particular uh, part of the web page here um most browsers allow you to do this there are like um, i mean they mo more or less look the same so here so if i want to get this information uh, just looking at the element here um, okay so so yeah so like um actually can here as this one and uh you can see like you can see like where wherever i put my the the mouse i can see like the element on the right hand side uh, panel um and then of course as i told you like okay so let me just choose one and i can see the element here like um, it's a div with its class and it's it's um like uh, different attributes it's, it has different attributes okay um so so you can see there are class there is an attribute called class which is like um uh, uh, say that it's there is class and there is ids these are um 
uh, redefined. It's uh, okay. Redefined attributes that you can find in your HTML elements. And basically, if I know the ID of the element, I can use basically in beautiful soap, I can just like get that one by like entering its ID here. Like, so I know there is an element has an ID result container and I can get that. Okay. So which one is this? Um, so I can get like, this is the element that has this ID from here. Um, like I can use the class name um, for and the type of the element it like I want. So this is I know this is a div and with class like this. Um, so okay, what I'm trying to do here is that I know this like all of these. Um, okay, so this is um, jobs or the um, postings fake, but okay. And if I say say I want to collect all of these. I want to collect the job postings. I can see that each of these elements is um, um it has a Yeah, so you can see, I don't know if you can see on the right hand side, there is, uh, they can see that this is a div uh, and it has a class card content. Uh, this again has a class card content and um, they all have the same, like, uh, okay, so again. So I'm going to be, if I use that parser, this i'm going to collect these different um elements that have the job postings okay and you can see like uh, that i got like all um okay, it's not clear here but i'm printing the element itself but of course i can get only the text from inside the element if i want and um like uh, from uh, for example, here I'm taking all of these job elements and I have, I can find the header that has a title, the header that has the company and the paragraph that has the location. So all of this I just got by looking at the element on the web page and can get by just using dot text, I can get the, like the text that within that um, element. And I can see that, for example, yeah. So here, this is uh, this one. So this is senior Python developer. This is a company and this is a location. And I can see that I got this. So the title at the location and the, the company. Uh, so um, uh, I, Yes, yes, this is, this, is, this is in short how to like um, use like the idea of using um, beautiful soup to get um, to like web scrape, like as a, your like the desired web page and what you get what you want from it. Of course, you are going to be like running this such like not necessarily such a code, but similarly, but for maybe a, a very long list of, of web pages. You can also get, for example, you can, the page I was looking at could be like, for example, um, our a news website. Um, okay, just, uh, just see. Just wanted to, like, I don't know, it's just uh, an idea. So let's say I want to like, uh, um, I want to uh, scrape the articles from uh, this website of the BBC, and of course, I'm not. I I don't want to like uh, list all the uh, the URLs to the articles themselves because they are going to change every day. Right? They are going to have new um, articles every day, but I can use like the homepage 
which so this is a, the base URL. And then I can use, uh, like, okay, so I have here, yeah, so I have multiple articles here. And to see what I need is the URL to the article. And I can see here that, um, okay, so. Can I increase this? Yes. Um, one second. Okay, so, uh, okay. Sorry. Yeah, so to so inspect this and what i will find is um that somewhere within this element there is a, the url to the article um uh, i'm sorry if it's this is i'm confusing you but i'm just like looking at the, you can see like whatever i, I put my mouse her, here on on the right, I it get highlighted on the page. Um, so it has to be here. Um, which part of it has? Uh, So you can see here, it's um, this is the, the image. Um, yeah, sorry, I'm, I'm looking at the example that I don't have the, like uh, I didn't look at before and looking at it. Um, okay, so I can see it here, finally. It's here. So yeah, it's like, this is, um, uh, the 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 sorry the attributes which okay I'm sorry if this is uh I'm sorry um fine yeah so it's an element with the tag a and uh, the link it's the link um the link address is uh, is um is the href uh, href for the uh, attribute of it so if i want to get that one what i will go like i will use my base uh, url will be the bbc home page and then in my like uh, here like find all what i will do i will like maybe i will enter like the element a and then the what i will be looking at is um, the is the attribute um okay so find let's find all but um so i will yeah so a we so we use uh, the right class and then get the the uh, the the href uh, attribute from it okay so this is just um like the general idea so even though like, this code doesn't do this, but um, um, okay. So this is um, for beautiful soup. Um, another um, option is crappy. Okay, so let's close this one. And um, so with crappy, it's like it's um, you are of course what you need to. To install, sorry, what I will need to install is pip install. So I pip install, scrappy. So scrappy. I already installed this, so it's going to run very quickly for me. And um, after that, I will have to start um, scrappy, think start project, and then um, demo. 
state of column label project. Okay. Ah, sorry. Um, right. Uh, I have to do that. Sorry. Was already in one. So, yeah, it has to run Scrappy start project and like it's demo let's call it okay and you can see i got this um um yeah i got this like a uh, directory prepared here that um it has several like um um files already what i need i would need to define um my scrapping a script in this um, uh, subdirectory spiders um, and you know like uh, I think uh, uh, is called spiders because like um, web scrapping also like a closely related term is web crawling even though like it's not the same meaning but yes yeah, like spidering is just um, another term for web web scrapping that's why uh, so I have already here a demo of something that's already like how to change this. So um, okay, so uh, so like here in my spiders, I have like you define your spiders here, and what you need to use is like uh, define a class uh, with using Scrappy Spider as the base, uh, class. And like here you define your URL and uh, again, you can like here, I'm getting all the content and putting it together in like as text. And then I'm dumping it into like a, a, a .txt, uh, file. And to run this, I need to, what I need to be, I need to be in the right, um, in the right uh, directory so i have to cd into my original one which was called my scrappy project and then what i have to run is scrappy um as uh, the name of my my spider so the name of this i think um uh, that is my spider project um, my scrappy project, sorry. Sorry, did I make a mistake? Um, sorry, scrappy crawl. It is check, check for a second. Mm. So yeah, I have to, it's a scrappy crawl. And scroll just to check that I need to use this, the name of the, the name of the file. Yes, please speak. Go ahead, whoever has a question. Um, okay. And yeah, at the end of that, I will find like my um, content of the page here, like in this file, I get, like the output file that I I specified. I'll ask a question maybe? Or... Yes, someone asked a question? Uh, a wonder, uh, Martin is asking, like, can you use uh, Scrappy and Beautiful so at the same time? <laughs> of course you can, but you don't need to. Like, you don't, they, are, they both do the same thing. And um, so you don't need to use both. You can use one, but if like, uh, if, like you, 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 there are no point of using both to do that, to arrive at the same, Arrive the same the same output. 
Uh, one thing about Scrappy, which is not a beautiful soup, is a simple thing. It's a simple library. It's a like it's lightweight. It's it gets it works well with static uh, static web pages. Some web pages are dynamic, and so um, beautiful soup is not well equipped to deal with those. Um, one thing also you that uh, beautiful soup is lacking is um, uh, like if you want to write a signal. Um, async using a a synchronous code which is when you are running like if you are you want to web scrap a lot of pages at the same time or um you want to to run it in an asynchronous way you, you already had this um the discussion about uh, um how to use uh, um, that like uh, async how to use async asynchronous uh, code in in before so uh in that in that case in that case if you want to do that like beautiful stuff is not the what the most suitable one uh scrappy has the option to to run uh asynchronously uh the same way i defined like i defined here this is my normal the one that uh, like was um the normal one but i can define an asynchronous one here like of course i'm going to be running like uh, multiple um uh web pages because that's when i will need to use async basically and um another thing i need to fix also or i can actually is is you go in the setting settings settings and like uh, you can like uncommit this part. So like here, like uh, the maximum concurrent requests that can be performed, and um, and um, you can like um, concurrent. Uh, um request for domain request for, for ip um and this download delay so you know, it's really fine uh you have like you can you can like um commit this part like to specify the like the and you can change those depending on your case or or your desire like what works for you and um again i can run this new sorry but it works uh, i can run this new um scraper using scrappy pro and the name of my file which was a sim spider um yeah so this is another option uh scrappy seems to me and this is just my 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 thing because like if you um how you run it how you define it it's easy in a way because you can just like um uh, start the project uh using this start project uh, command but um for me it's not, like it's um it maybe it doesn't fit well like if you want to to define like uh, um i mean it's, it seems uh over complicated maybe uh like you get all of these files and stuff uh for me like the other options like for example cerulean and and playwright these ones are like um uh, with more time, we maybe can would have provided a better demo that included those as well. But those have are like are more powerful, meaning that they they have more options. They can run asynchronously, and they can also deal handle dynamic web pages. Uh, you ha can have options for um, how to say. So there are web pages that they don't load unless you like dynamic web pages that means that because they don't they don't load everything unless um um 
they have JavaScript code and basically, yeah, they have a dynamic element in that sense. So you are you are understand that, I think. So because the, the content is not directly available in HTML, you need to wait a little bit for the page to load. Um, you can have you can use these options in like um, in Selenium and Playwright to to delay to wait for for particular element to load to get the the, the and then get the script and get the information. So these are not available with uh, uh, beautiful soup directly, but these other uh, libraries have these options. To know how to use those, I would just like recommend what you do is just you look at the on the um, documentation and the basic tutorials. It shouldn't be so difficult. Uh, and of course, we remain on Slack if you have any questions about those. Do you have a question right now? If you have any question right now, you can go ahead. Um, yes, Hillary. Yeah. So. Uh, hello, my question is that uh, if you're going to use, let's say, beautiful soup, I see that you have to pass in a URL. And yeah. so it's going to be kind of, uh, I mean, uh, time consuming getting many articles because you have to identify first the tag that has the content. I mean, isn't it a lot because you have to check the tag and then ask, uh, pick only the content that is in that specific tag. Uh, that is and that yeah, is for so I understand your question. Yes. Is it going to be time consuming? You, you, you are asking if there are a quicker way to do this? Yes, maybe uh, automate because also if you if you get different articles, they have di different tags that have the content. So you may not be uh, you may not have to you may not have a common function to run that. Um, yeah, so, uh, okay, so this is a good question, actually. Um, but I don't know if there is like, uh, a, like a unified answer, because if you are going to look at different um, uh, news, like um, say I want to get news articles from many websites. So I have, for example, the BBC, I have the, um Al Jazeera, I have uh, several other news websites and I want to get the articles from those. Um, I want to get the text. So um you are saying like I want to get to get the URL to it, to the to the article. As I what I was telling you that you can look at the like where the URL is stated but it is possible for you to just collect all the links from the web page by just using this yes you want to collect all the href um that's from this web from this page and then follow those um but sometimes this is going to be an article sometimes it's going to be um something different so um i don't know i don't know if it's um like, yeah, so I, basically my answer is that I'm not sure if there is like a, a better way to do this. This also was, I was on my own thinking to, to solve this, but I'm not sure if there is like a, a good, yeah, I'm not sure. And um, is Scrappy similar that we have to also inspect, uh, you have to go to inspect and see which tag uh, or class has the content and now if you want that. to get specific content is specific part of the page you don't want to get the whole it's a whole page yes there are all of all these libraries they have uh, like options to to like uh, to to select a particular part of the of the page if that's what you want of course if you want to just get the whole page and not look at it that's like um, that easy, but yeah, all of these libraries have these options to get like a particular element and a particular uh, part of the element itself. Yeah, because they are web scrapping. That is a, that is a, by definition. 
Okay, so if uh, I mean the easier part seems like we, we just get the entire page and uh, and just use that, uh, just get remove the tags and all. I mean, isn't that easier? So and that and in that way we won't even need uh, scraping. So we just yeah. So the... I don't know if you get my point. So yes. yeah, yeah. So if uh, what I wanted is to get the text from the 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 bbc homepage yes i can just use even just request i can just use a module request and get the whole html from this html content from this page okay that's all i want but what i am talking about is that like you don't want to get the the information from the home page you want to get each of these articles right so this like all the life so i want to get the information from this article but I also all want to this is this articles actually yes culture future um so there are different articles that are shown here but the content of the page is not going to be the content of all, like the whole content of this article right so to get the whole content of this article I need this URL and I was just saying because this home page links for this uh, the next article you can find the URL here. So I can find the URL too for this article within this element. So what I'm saying is that I can write a script that will look at the home page for the bbc.com, get all the articles, get all the URLs for the articles, and then run like in a loop, run all over all the articles to, to get like all the content from the, all these web pages. Does it make sense to you? Yeah, so, so I understand that um, I can use the same URL to get the uh, subsequent uh, pages. Uh, exactly. But I mean, after I have the pages, I, I, I can just use response and have the different pages. And um, like, yeah, you uh, don't, yeah. don't really need the, uh, don't really need uh, scraping because in this case i just have the entire page maybe just to remove the uh the html tags and all yeah it, that's an option of course like once you get the the url to this article for example you can just get the whole page which includes the text and like other like um unnecessary stuff but you can clean that later on if you want um yeah you don't need to to web scrape for this part what i was saying that is that to get the urls themselves that was that the part that like where you need to look at the element and get the url um yeah i'm not sure if like um is it possible to just get the whole um um html uh, content from the home the home web page and then like um um just do like a, a, write a, a python script that clean it and gets all the urls from it and then like i don't know if which one would be more efficient i don't know if this is what you meant or not is this what you meant yeah what uh, yeah that is yeah that is possible to to just use the same base url and get the different pages so um i know web scraping in this case is to like get a specific a specific tag and let's say it's it's the body the body tag that has the content and we, we don't need the rest yeah i mean uh yeah that will be like a lot of a lot of work to start identifying if the body has the content even or uh, maybe the body tag isn't there so i mean it it is a lot of time using web scraping and we could just use the same the entire page uh, yeah to... okay that's possible yes that is possible what what i'm saying and this is my argument is that what you're doing is that you are shifting the work from writing it in using a web scraping um, library to using writing like a specific uh, python code to, to to clean the html content right so anyway you're going to do the same thing to clean to get uh, the element you want but you can either do it using like uh, maybe beautiful soup or like um or other libraries or you can just get the whole html but yeah the point is yes so what you are saying what you are your approach is fine uh it can work and which one will perform better well this has to like can be tested but just let me make this note 
as uh, I was I saying before, and this doesn't work with beautiful soup itself. The other libraries can work with dynamic elements. So sometimes some of some of some of the web pages you cannot really get the content you want just by running requests. Um, you need to uh, um, like uh, wait for like you 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 will not get the content you want from beautiful soup itself by like getting the whole web page because like the elements are dynamic and all they only load um like uh, with uh, like um after some time so to to handle this you need to use uh, some of the other libraries that can handle the dynamic elements and um i mean it's, it might not be like you might not need that but like in it might if you come across this you you have to know that you have to use other one some of the other libraries not beautiful so other libraries can handle this um i don't know is this does this make sense or is, is it clear uh, yeah, yes it's clear Okay, so anyone else? Any other questions? I think we're over. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, my other question is that there are some sites. Uh, I tried one for Swahili that uh, without the, I tried using Beautiful Soup and without the headers, I, I got a, a, a error that request not allowed. Yeah, um, exactly. I, I think it was detecting like a, a, a bot or something, so you have to include the user agent to pretend it's a. Yeah. So exactly, this is a kind of of, of errors you can get. Yes. Yes. Because so yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah. My question is in that isn't that illegal kind of because uh, I mean they they didn't want to they didn't want the scraping to be done. Right. Yeah. So uh, that's true. So yeah, this is the issue with with web scraping, and maybe you should have covered this in the slides. So web scraping is. Um, uh, it's uh, it's kind of tricky uh, in a sense because there are legitimate web scraping and there is illegitimate web scraping. So some part of it is illegal. Uh, so like it's not what you what we wanted to do, of course. So um, but a lot of websites put this kind of uh, um, like a kind of uh, protection against web scraping. Uh, against uh, bots in general and so like uh, some web pages will not load unless like it's um, it's a headful mode so you, you it, need, it needs to recognize that there is a browser that is opening it okay um and will not it will not like uh, respond to like using beautiful so we are not going to be able to to get the whole content for that you can use um like playwright and selenium can like basically simulate the, the the presence of a browser so you can get the content in that case so but yeah so about the ethicality or like the legality of this um so basically you should be fine getting any public available information you can actually look at the licensing of of the of the data in 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 like uh, is it fair use or not um of course like uh, there are you're, you're not going to be able to to do this anyway but you don't need to get any kind of uh, content that you need to sign up for you need to sign in or to have an account you don't want to get any data that has some personal information um so yeah so there are, there are like uh, some kind of uh, ethical questions um in in the data you use uh but as long as you stick to uh, like public available um, and publicly like uh, allowed uh, data you should you should be fine but again even those websites that have publicly available data they have these protections and so you need to use as i said like you need to use like um, maybe use selenium or um playwright to actually try to access this this uh, like get the data from there because the data is available, you can use it if you look at it yourself. But because they have protection against bots, you cannot get it. Um, because you need to, like, a, yeah, you need to simulate having a browser, basically. Um, yeah, so 
uh, yeah um is this is this uh, like this also a question hillary yeah yeah that's okay um, yeah, yeah so because i'm not seeing any copyright in the page so uh, i'm assuming maybe they are preventing bots yeah they prevent basically yes they're preventing bots you are going to face this like uh uh in many like um many websites have this automatically basically because so they implement this and um uh like like hopefully you're not going to be needing any but sometimes some of course like you know when you access web pages just normally when you're browsing some web pages will ask you to confirm that you are a human and will ask you to like um you know pass some of these like uh, are you a human tests and um of course uh even though that they are testing for human you still can use uh, the, this web scrap libraries to simulate like being like moving uh, like a um like, like a human so, so there is what this um i don't know if we did we didn't have okay so we did, you didn't have this challenge yet or maybe like this was from the other batches but um sometimes it's not as a is a question of ethicality, but like um, um, you need to press something on the page to get to like, for example, if you want to get, um, say you want to get the like uh, images from uh, um, a video, right? And to, to capture the images from the video, you need to let the video like um, run and you have to press play basically on the, on the, on the web page. But like it's not a question about like the web page doesn't allow you to do to 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 use a bot for this, but it's just like you can um, using Selenium you can for example simulate a click on the web page in some place and you can basically allow the video to run and capture the, the images without you actually opening the pages. This is going to be running just automatically in the background. Um, yeah, so. Uh, uh, yeah, I feel like this uh, this this um, this demo could have been like more informative if we included some of these cases actually in the code instead of I, I went to basic maybe and um, yeah um, but yeah I, I was thinking like uh, because what we are going to be collecting is just text data also add audio um, yeah so anyway does this like um is do you still have questions or like is this clear to some extent or does it, like uh, give you a good idea hillary yeah, that is clear okay uh yeah so if there are any further questions please ask me uh tag me on Slack, and um let's try to like go um i will try to also provide you with some um good references so that like they can uh, follow along when you set up whatever kind of scrapping script you want to use and uh, so let's end this session here since we are really over time and